Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shay. I'm a full-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Macari. I'm Tyler, the husband, and I work a boring office job, although at the moment I'm working from home, so. So, we're in a step up in the world. Yeah. Anyway, so we thought today we would do something a little bit different, and I am going to quiz Tyler on some common, or maybe not so common, uh, reseller terms and phrases. Um, to kind of give you guys a level playing field here, he does know some reselling words because I obviously speak about things in general. Um, he'll hear me like, you know, trying to figure out what something is called. So he yeah. does have a little bit of a leg up on the typical guy who knows nothing about fashion. I think that's fair. Although I don't have nearly the, the knowledge that a full-time reseller would have. But when you, wh where do you think your vocab stands? I would, th I would say I'm in the top half of all fashion-related terminology. Yeah, so he should do pretty well. So there's 20 words here, and we're going to go through them and see. I will be honest, some of these words I knew, some of them I didn't. You guys recommended a lot of these words to me. Um, one thrifty T, he does a um, word of the day every Thursday, so I did get some words from him. And then I just got some words from, you know, my common, like, listing in life. So... If you guys enjoy reseller content and you want to see more things like this and you want to see more things with my husband, he's in most videos and we will do be doing some more fun things where we do challenges and things like that down the road. So if that interests you, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, um, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we post a new video. I post new videos every Sunday and Wednesday. And leave us a comment down below and let us know some reseller terms that you learned um, while reselling or things you just like to use in your descriptions. I love getting new ways to describe things and new keywords to add in. So I would be so excited to see the comments that you guys leave below. All there right. you go. Are you ready? Uh, nervous, yeah. You nervous? A little bit. You got this. So I started off really easy. So yeah. my assumption would be that at the beginning you're really going to get it. Okay? Hopefully. I'm kind of nervous for you. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so we have these little things here. If he gets it wrong, it'll make a noise if it was on. It is on. <coughs> Apparently, I don't know how to use technology. And then if it's right, it'll go. I guess I'm going to hold them up so you guys can hear it. So anyway, the first word on the list is BOLO. Well, it's not a word that's an acronym and it's be on lookout. I said there were terms, phrases, all of the things. So way to be rude. Well, that's a that's a... A Leo term, a law enforcement officer term. So be on the lookout for this person. Well then, okay. So we're already starting off a little snarky. A little bit, a little bit cocky. Yeah, yeah I knew that before for reselling. Okay. Yeah. This one, if you don't know this, you might as well just quit your job. Okay. Okay. ROI. Uh, it's return on investment. If yeah. you didn't know that, you'd have to quit your job. If you guys don't know, he does work in the finance world. Um, one of the reasons we say he has a boring job. So. <laughs> Anyway, okay, we're getting into some that I okay. don't know. Okay, salvage. Uh, the face, the face, I love salvage? it. Salvage? Salvage. Uh, salvaging for self. What? Salvaging or saving something for selling. Oh, that's so cute, but no. No. So, so it's like the band. <laughs> you denied yourself. Okay, so it's like the band. I, I've saved actually some of the definitions on here. At the bottom of denim jeans, so I can show you it. Ah. So, selvage fabric. Selvage or selvage is self-finished edge of fabric, keeping it from the unraveling and fraying. The term self-finished means that the edge does not require additional finishing work. Gotcha. Yeah. So, a new word for you. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Game on. And that was actually recommended by somebody. Yeah. So, uh, sear sucker. Sear sucker is a type of puckered fabric. I mean, kind of. Yeah, it's a, that like wrinkly f fabric. I mean, I love your your description. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's a thin, puckered, all cotton fabric, commonly striped or checked, used yeah. to make clothing for spring and summer wear. It's the stuff that you see preppy boat sailing people wear. Oh, so because you're a preppy boat sailing guy, you knew, right? <laughs> yes, I I can sail. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yoke, as in. It's spelled like it egg yolk. Y-O-L-K. Um, Actually, no, I am wrong. It is not spelled like the egg yolk. 
Although when I googled it, it did say that. So it, yeah, it could be two ways. I'm not so sure. So it's got to go around the neck of some kind. It's got to be some kind of uh, neck uh, additive. Accoutrement, yeah. you were going to say. I know you well, were. So teams of oxen wear the yoke between them. So it's got to be something like that. So, I mean, I don't know which way okay. to go with that. Um, okay, so it's a yoke is a shaped pattern piece which forms part of a garment, usually fitting around the neck and shoulders or around the hips to provide support for looser parts of the garment, such as a gathered skirt or the body of a shirt. Oh, so it's just a, a doubled up piece of fabric to... Yeah, I mean, what they show here, it, it almost just kind of, uh, it, it, they show a western shirt, and uh, some of it's these we the, might be able to show you, but um, it, it, it draws attention to the shoulders yeah. and kind of gives, you know, for women, I'm sure it gives them more of a defined look. Or right. for men too, actually. You guys sometimes want to have the, that defined broad shoulder look, right? Yeah. So I feel like that's probably what it's meant for, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right. Now this one you should know because it was something I had to learn. Okay? So iCat. iCat was that uh, Alice and Olivia top with like the eyes <laughs> on it. It's like that, not polka dot, but it had like the splashes of color. We're going to put that dress on the screen. Now, that is iCat, so yes on that. But eyes, no. All right. Okay. <laughs> Fabric made using an Indonesian decorative technique in which warp or weft threads or both are tie-dyed before weaving. Uh-huh. Make sense now that you think about the dress? Well, yeah. The dress has splashes of color everywhere. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So this one, okay. This one, okay. We'll just say it. Kilowatts. Huh? Kilowatts. Kilowatts? No idea. You do too. We talked about these yesterday. You made fun of me for being pretentious when I said the word to my mother. Oh, capris, basically. Shortened pants. Essentially, yes. So, this one's a little bit complicated. So, the definition says that the French word colouat is a pair of panties, pants, knickers, trousers, shorts, or historically breeches, derived from the French word colot, which is C U L O T, meaning the lower half of a thing, the lower garment in this case. However, that doesn't really explain the fact that it's usually a very wide leg pant. It usually goes to about the ankle, maybe a little bit shorter. It's kind of, you know, we, we've sold some Madewell ones, okay. um, things like that. I think we actually have some Madewell ones Not in our store. Not quite bell bottoms, too. but wide. Yeah, wide leg, long capris. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. This one, another complicated one. Rami. Rami? Rami. You, you've seen Rami before on tags, I'm sure. Yeah. Isn't it just a type of fabric? Okay, but... I don't know. Rami is a natural fiber whose appearance and um, feeling is somewhere between that of cotton and linen. Uh, Rami first began to appear in parallel in the United States in the 1980s. Okay. So it's, it's something that you're going to see, if you guys don't know, often in vintage sweaters. That's where we see it the most often. Yeah. Yep, you should know that. This is what I told you I learned, so you should know. Pussy bow. Pussy bow is the bow on the the dress. On the what? Hmm? Part of body. Isn't it on the front? Like right here? Kind. Of. Yes. Ish. Um, so there's another word for it that I cannot pronounce and you guys can come for me because I know you want to. Um, it's like lavalier, lava, lava, I don't know. I don't got it guys. If you guys know how to pronounce it, down below. Let me know. Anyways, pussy bow is, is a style of neckwear often associated with women's and girls' blouses and bodices. It takes the form of a bow tied at the neck, similar to those tied around the necks of kittens and cats. Yeah, so it's like the... One that is hanging yes. right there. Yes, we have an article of clothing right now that I was just listing that has a pussy bow. Yeah. Yes. So often that is seen more often in vintage clothing, but I think because um, vintage is becoming trendy right now, it's making a comeback. All so, right. Damask. I don't know. You don't know at all? No. Um, a woven fabric with a pattern visible on both sides, typically used for table linen and upholstery. And that is the... Okay. Okay. Oh, you're not doing so good. All right. Just thank like, you. You're welcome. This is what I know you know. Yeah. I put it on here just for you. Well, thank you. Jackard. That's embroidery. Like that nice 
textured embroidery on fabric. I mean, basically, that's essentially what it is. So, jacket fabric, the pattern and colors are incorporated into the weave instead of being printed or dyed onto the surface of the fabric. The term jacket indicates how the pattern is woven and not the specific pattern itself. Yeah. Yeah, so it's basically a raised, um, woven design, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's so the different colors are the different threads that are woven into the fabric rather than just dyeing it all together. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, another one you should know. Ruched. Ruched is the the puckering on the sides of dresses usually, or Basically. anywhere. Really, it's, it's that pulling together area. It's a gathered ruffle or pleat of fabric used for trimming or decorating garments. <laughs> now, funny story about that, I did not know how to say that and called it rutched until I heard Voyage of Herb say it the correct way. And I was like, oh, it makes way more sense now. Hmm. So, dolman sleeves. Uh, wide sleeves? I mean... Like big wide sleeves? So, a dolman is a very wide sleeve where it meets the body. It may be almost the full length of the torso from underarm to waist, but then it narrows usually rather dramatically toward the arm and waist. So, basically bell bottoms, but for your arms. I mean, kind of. <laughs> I mean... Alright. Okay, I guess we can put it that way. Um, okay, so this one is one from Thrifty T's... Word of the day. Word of the day, yeah. Smocking. Oh, you told me this one too. I did. Yeah. I don't remember what it was though. Um, so there's a picture that goes along with it, but it says, Smocking is embroidery technique used to gather fabric so that it can stretch. Before elastic, smocking was commonly used in cuffs, bodices, necklines, and in garments where buttons were undesirable. Oh. Yeah, so it really makes me think of, um, I don't know if you guys are 90s kids like I am, but there were these 90s shirts that were like tie-dyed and they were like super, super tiny and you had to stretch them out to get anything. It kind of had like that look to it, but I think this is a little bit more tightly knit, but that kind of look to it. Hmm. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Are you learning anything? Yeah. Do you feel, feel like you're more of a reseller? I feel now? a little bit humbled at the moment. Good. Good. I'm glad. Great. Uh, okay, fall bala. No idea. Come on, you can do this. Think about it. Fall bala. Yeah. Nope. No. Uh, so, a fall bala is a flounce or trimming for a woman's garment. Often a ruffle, frill, or flounce. It is commonly used on swimwear, oh, okay. dresses, skirts, and tops. So it's kind of like, um, like another layer. Like the, the picture they the, show is another layer where it's like a It's ruffle. like a skirt for your, your shirt. A skirt for your shirt. Okay, so fall bala is a skirt for your shirt. You it's, like a half on it's like a half poncho, basically. <laughs> People are going to come away from this and be like, oh, I know it is. It's a skirt for your shirt. Yeah. Great. We have a trademark. All right. Anyway, okay, this one, this word can mean more than one thing, but I'm talking about specifically in the vintage market. What is dead stock? Dead stock is something that is vintage that still has tags. I mean, basically. Okay, never sold. So dead stock has come to mean products that are no longer available for sale. When one, when used in this context, the phrase is usually spelled as one word, and this sometimes means merchandise that is no longer available and is coveted simply because it cannot be found in stores. Okay. Now, granted, with uh, Rally Roots and other big places, uh, big resellers, you're going to see them referring to dead stock as items that are no longer for sale, vintage, and have either tags or at least have never been worn. Right. So close, close. Yeah, you ba I mean, basically. So, um, okay, so we only have a few more. Oh. So you better redeem yourself, and I gotta tell you, these are ones I didn't know myself. So. Oh, good. Have fun. Gusset. Gusset. Um. Isn't that like the underneath for like dresses? Define like the, the poofy dresses. Isn't it like the the no. frills underneath? I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh, gusset is a triangular or rhomboidal piece of fabric inserted into a seam to add breadth or reduce stress from tight-fitting clothing. Gussets were used at shoulders, mm. underarms, and hems of traditional shirts and chemise chemises made of rectangular lengths of linen to shape the garments of the body. Gotcha. So it's those triangle pieces on the sides. Yeah. Got it. Got it? Yeah. You learning? I am. Good. I'm glad. Uh, slub fabric. No. <laughs> no, no. 
fabric is created with slight knots and nubbles which can be seen as thicker raised threads on fabric surfaces. These imperfections are either a characteristic of the yarn, particularly natural fibers, or created purposely with the intention of giving the fabric an organic, tactile look and feel. So basically free people. Like that fuzzy... No, it's not fuzzy. Like that, it's like that... the raised linen-y yeah. like look. Like you see okay. on flax. Gotcha. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you had to, if you wanted to know these uh, ending ones that I didn't know myself, got it from Voyages Verbs listings. Thank you, girl. You know all your keywords. So, there's right. that. Trumpet skirt. Sorry, had to do it. It's got to be tight to the waist and then flares out. Wow, I'm actually impressed. So the trumpet skirt is a stylish piece that's come in and out of fashion since the Victorian era. And um, the silhouette, which is fitted around the hips and waist with a flared hem, is a popular look for bridal gowns. What well, trumpet? It just flares. I'm that's very... the only thing I got. Oh, hey, I'm impressed. And the last one. Okay. Ready? Yeah. The bishop sleeve. The bishop sleeve. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's got to be... no idea. No idea. So a bishop sleeve is a long, full satin sleeve with fullness held at the wrist by a cuff. A bishop sleeve may be gathered at the cap as well oh. as at the wrist. It is essentially a relatively full bell sleeve that is gathered or pleated into both the armhole and the bottom. So it's that poofy... Well, it's... Then contained on the wrist sleeve. Kind of, but that's also a balloon sleeve, so oh, you got to be okay. careful of the two. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So I did you, all right. I got I mean, you some got of them. I got like four. Like four out of twenty. So ooh, I got a D. Like a twenty percent. F. Yeah. Yeah, I failed. Yeah. Failed hard. And and he knows a lot given reselling terms. It's just that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to save you here. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to see more things where we test him or challenge him on things, I would love to do that because this is so much fun for me. I finally feel smart. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. Please make sure you leave us a comment down below. Let us know if you liked it. Let us know if there were terms in here that maybe we got wrong. Um, Google can definitely steer us wrong. Or if there are other ways that you use the term pronunciation. I know I got most of it wrong, so let us know in the comments below. I uh, would love to be able to actually pronounce them correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we will be back very soon with a new video. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all for watching.